Hello, and welcome to Gamer Corner. Today we're going to be talking about Black Desert Online. So, you may not have heard about this MMO. It just, within the last, I want to say, couple months came out in uh, the United States. It's actually a Korean MMO and has been out for a while. They're slowly releasing, basically. It's not released exactly the way it is in Korea, They've got like some patches that they're kind of spanning out so the game flows into it, kind of like how it did in Korea, but at a much faster pace. So I'm going to run through the basics real quick because the game is insanely fucking complicated, but I'm going to run through the basics. So if you're, you know, like I want to know whether or not this is worth playing, you'll get the base. And then after that, I'll go into some detailed crap. So to begin with, we got the classes. One thing that I'm not a huge fan of with the game, and it's not like it's the end of the world or anything, but classes are gender bound. So the warrior is a dude. You can't play a female warrior, but you like the sorceress is girl. You can't play a male sorceress. So it's just kind of weird because most games now come out with both genders for it so i don't know the character creator in the game is pretty crazy you can i've just running around i've literally seen people who've changed their character to look like the joker with the big scars and stuff and like people who look like giant monsters with tumors on their heads and stuff like it's so crazy like you can do literally anything with the character creator it's nuts but as far as classes go for males we have warrior berserker and wizard Females, we got Ranger, Sorceress, Valkyrie, and Witch, which the Wizard and Witch are the same class. It's the only class that they have gender swaps, so you can be male and female, essentially. On, I think they're minorly different, but I haven't played the Witch. The only class I've actually played is Wizard, but that's because there's so many intricacies, and I'm not even close to far enough to know what's going on with even just the Wizard to really get into any of the other classes. Other, they also the big thing in this game is the professions. So we have trading, taming, fishing, gathering, crafting like alchemy, furniture for in your house, and then there's cooking. And I think there's a few more. The stuff's still very stuff's coming out constantly. So by the time this video comes out, there'll probably be like three new classes and two new professions. But the way the game's set up is it's really grindy, and I don't want to say that negatively, but from what I understand, Korean MMOs are very grindy in general. It's just a trait they have because the people there like grindier games. So the only way to level experience gain-wise is to kill things. So quests and stuff don't give you experience. It's all about killing mobs. But there's so much other stuff to do in the game that you're not bound to, like, like you never feel like, oh, I have to go run around and kill a bunch of stuff. And you probably shouldn't just kill a bunch of stuff to level. You should do the other stuff on the way. But the only way to level, really, is to kill stuff, which the quests usually ask you to kill stuff, but they don't give you, like, experience in addition to the guys you killed. The only experience you gain is the guys you killed. With the, with the professions... As far as everything like profession-wise goes, and there's a few other uses, there's something called energy. So you have a certain amount of energy that recovers over time. And every time you make something, you use some of your energy. So it's not like some games where as long as you have the materials, you can make as many of the things you want. You're also bound by the energy, which is also used to gather materials, to friggin' buy workers, to talk in world chat so there's a bunch of stuff you have to use your energy for so most of the time you're running pretty low so there are times where you have plenty of materials but you have to wait for your energy to come back to really do anything with those materials so as far as the crafting goes it doesn't hold your hand pretty much so i'm doing alchemy right now and in order to make my potions I have to either come up with or look up the recipes for my potions. So there's no like thing that says, okay, you're going to need three of these, four of those, and two of those. You literally have to look up the recipes. And most of them have four ingredients, 
and they have varying amounts of each of those ingredients. So one thing could be five of this, four of this, two of that, and one of those. You have no idea what any of them are till you make the potion, and then it like saves it in your potion made list. So you're really gonna have to like like crafting in this game is not simple. It is an endeavor. It took me several hours of friggin' looking up guides and figuring all of this stuff out to have just the baseline knowledge to set up my crafting. So now we're gonna get into some of the more serious stuff. So that's sort of your blast run through. The game's fun. You run around, kill guys, you know, it's your classic. The combat's pretty quick. It's not hotkey based, it's more movement. So like if I go down, click, it casts my fireball. But once my fireball hits, I right click and then I'll sh explode the fireball to do bonus damage. And then if I side click or something, it does a different magic attack. So it feels very, combat fe flows pretty good because it's all like movement and click based. But you still can hit the buttons like one, two, three, four, five, six. It's just the cooldowns are longer when you do that. So you basically will be way less efficient hitting your buttons. And your hot bar is really small, so you don't really have very much. It's mostly reserved for potions and stuff. So the game, if, if you ever play Guild Wars 2, it's the concept Guild Wars 2 played with, with the rolling around and feeling very action-y, but taken to the extreme. Because it's all about, which it's very, I played Asia, Age of Wushu, which was like a martial arts MMO. Combat's somewhere between Age of Wushu and Guild Wars 2, where it's action-y, but it's not like you're bound to it, and it's much simpler than Age of Wushu was as far as the combat goes. So getting into the crafting, the, the meat of it. You have three sort of bars to manage. You have your energy bar, which we talked about with your crafting. We have your contribution bar, which has to do with quests you've done, and then you get contribution points. And then you have your skill points, and that's how you buy like your abilities, your fireballs, your lightning bolts, your all your other crap like that. Your energy is how you gather stuff for yourself. Your contribution is how you buy houses and nodes for workers to work at. So you have to constant to get like your grand crafting setup. You have to do quests to get these contribution points. Once you get your contribution points, you start buying nodes, and you can set workers to work at those nodes. Well, once the workers work, after a certain, like, they have, like, a certain amount of their own energy, once they're out of energy, you have to pay them in beer so you can get them to work again. So it's, like, this super complicated system of setting everything up, and you're, like, looking at your map, so... You will probably at first be scared of it when you see it. You're going to be like, I have no idea what I'm doing here. It's really not that bad once you kind of get the flow of it. But it's definitely got one of those learning curves where for the first like two or three days you're playing, you're going to have a little to no idea what you're doing as far as your crafting stuff goes. And it's pretty much required that you set up these nodes in order to get your crafting going. Because in order to craft... Let's say you want to make a super awesome potion of Thor strength. You have to get, you know, your flowers and your water and your whatever. Well, you have to gather all of those things. So instead of me gathering all of the flowers and the water and all of that, I can have my worker gather all of them so I save the energy. Then I can use those mats to make the potion. So in order to basically streamline your system... You have to have your workers do all of the gathering for you, or a, a large majority of it. It's going to be all your general, like, your iron ore. You're going to have them gather all of that while you're gathering the more important ingredients that are harder to get. And once you get your work up set up, you can basically do one or two things and have the workers completely make everything. Because, like, the workers can make, like, like, furniture. You can make furniture for in your house. You basically only have to do one or two parts in steps in that plan so the workers will mine the wood but then you can set up a worker to you you refine the wood into planks and then the workers turn it into boards and then they'll also turn it into furniture but they can't turn it into the one piece that you have to do but they'll do the rest of it 
So it gets pretty, it gets insanely complicated. But if you get a crazy setup, I mean, it has the potential for you to get on, do two or three things, and you're like a millionaire. You just like have like a furniture making market. You know, you set up like a huge friggin' system of workers working for you to do a bunch of stuff to make you money in the game. The housing is also pretty complicated because, like, you need to use those contribution points to buy them, but then you have to pay to upgrade them. And cert- each house has like three things it can, a couple things that it can be used for, and it's better at certain things than other things. So you have to like optimize your housing and decide how to set up. And each sitting city has different housing options, and the map's pretty darn big. And with your energy, to get more energy, you have to go around and get knowledge. So you have to basically kill mobs till you learn about them, which is just random. So it could take you five minutes. It could take you two hours. You also need to talk. Literally every person you see, you want to talk to because that gets your knowledge up, which increases your total energy bar, which means more crafting stuff. And this is all just the crafting. You know, if you just want to run around and do your skills, the skill trees look pretty crazy too. Because you have your certain skill points. And I'm, I, as far as I know, there's no level cap in the game. But 50 is kind of when endgame starts. But with your skills, as far as the point I'm at, I have way more options for skills than I have skill points to spend on them. So it looks like instead of having like a talent tree, you basically have a skill tree. You only are allowed certain skills to make your character do what you want to do unless you earn more skill points, which is like some quests give it as rewards. Otherwise, you can get it rewards for other things. It's just all over the place. And I assume you get more from leveling and whatnot. It's just literally you will look at it and... Just be like, whoa, this is way, way too much for me to figure out in the time span I want. So it is not a simple game. If you're looking for a World of Warcraft or something, which you can make complicated, but at its core is pretty simple. This game is not simple at its core. It's complicated at its, you know, the beginning and complicated at the end because you can make it simple and just grind stuff but then you won't have energy which means you won't be able to do anything else so all you'll be able to do is buy stuff with no money because you didn't set up skills or anything and then the trading skill i almost so you got the trade you can trade with these trade guys and do little trade missions where you literally go to one guy buy something that's selling like for cheap there and run it over to another guy and it's not like items that can be used for anything else they're literally just for trading and it increases like your barter skill for this trading and then with we got taming so you have horses and they can die and get used up and whatever but you can tame horses and a way to make money is you can get a male horse that's really good and use them as a stud to breed other horses and like have people breed horses and produce more horses Just like the workers, you train your workers and they become better and you can sell them on like a worker market and other people who want those workers can buy them so they don't have to train like 10 workers to hopefully get the one worker they want. So there's so much to cover that it's going to be impossible to give you guys a complete synopsis in one video. So I'll probably release, we'll probably do a couple videos talking about it more specifically not necessarily in this manner but more like gameplay so i can kind of point stuff out but that's sort of black desert in a really really big nutshell game's fun if you're looking for a complicated mmo it's totally worth your time i think it's running for 30 bucks right now but if you spend 50 you get some extra bonus stuff like a pet that doesn't really do very much you know a horse so you don't have to go out and gather it some furniture so you don't have to go buy it it's all stuff that you can pretty much get in the game but you could spend 20 extra dollars and get like a quicker start on it and then you get two guest pass seven day guest pass instead of one because if you buy it you get one seven day guest pass so no matter what if you buy it you can give a friend seven days to try it out so 
if you're sitting in a lull with MMOs, it's worth a shot. Well, that's going to be the end of uh, this episode of Gamer Corner. Are you, are you still sucking at Mario? I'm doing so fucking bad, it's not even funny. Fuck this game. What level are you on? Uh, oh, I switched to Mario 2 because Mario 3 is pissing me off. <laughs> so that's Gamer Corner, though. Brian's the shit. Check it out.